Hello and welcome to the Skunk Works division of the Kerbal Space Program NASA series I'm running. I'm currently developing a VentureStar SSTO on a um, sandbox save, so I can use it later. I've decided I'm going to use some more um, theoretical technologies and conceptual ideas that NASA had kicking around for some years. Um, and VentureStar being one of the more fully developed ones, um, it seemed like a pretty good fit. So the plan is to create a single stage to orbit space plane that still launches like a rocket, glide, has a glider return, and since I have the Clockheed Martian pack and tweak scale, um, I'm also going to be, include the linear aerospike. The linear aerospike is actually a pretty interesting piece of tech and pretty. it's been extensively tested. Um, NASA has test fired the one that was supposed to go on the X-33, which was the technology demonstrator for the X-33 Venture Store. After the program was canceled, there's been some further development um, on the aerospike concept, more in the toro toroidal range. Um, but interestingly enough, in 1998, they did run some flight tests with a linear aerospike mounted to an SR-71. They didn't actually hot fire it because there were a lot of um, liquid oxygen leaks with their apparatus, but they did do some cold test. Um, they flew liquid oxygen through it. They flowed liquid oxygen through it during flight and also did um, water te flow tests with water. That's really just a long way of me explaining this technology is out there. The Venture Star is no more and probably never will be much. It'll probably never be resurrected, but it was plausible enough and it almost happened, so it gets included in my program. And so here is my ship. The intention was to build something that flies like the, the Venture Star. Um, getting the look down was going to be pretty much impossible because of the lifting body design. You'll notice there's an identical one sitting on the runway. Um, that's going to become important later because this is my sandbox save. I'm not, I don't pay as much attention to safety and recovering my objects. So that's going to be an issue later. Now for the vessel itself, the real Venture Star was designed to be a lifting body. This, can, this thing can fly as a lifting body, but I just don't have... Um, the stall speed is so insanely high, I was never going to get it down safely. I tried. And because I don't have the myriad wonderful computer assists that real, um, like say the Space Shuttle has, which would be the nearest analog to this, I had to add some wings for a lot more uh, cross-range capability and a slower uh, landing speed. And I used tweak scale to reduce those engines to about a third of their normal size. And that really went a long way to make this much more inefficient than it should be. A single linear aerospike that comes in the Clockheed Martian pack would have been more than fine to get this. But <clears throat> because I'm trying to be trying to get this to be the Venture Star more in spirit than anything else. The original concept for Venture Star was to have eight linear aerospikes, I believe, so that if one shut down, they could shut down the corresponding engine, um, which I have uh, modeled in this ship using action groups, and that meant having to scale down the engines. And the original design called for Venture Star still to still be able to make orbit, um, I believe, with half of its engines failing. It wasn't going to reach um, the safety levels of an aircraft, but it was going to be an order of magnitude better than the space shuttle. And you can see I'm clicking those engines off as I go. And one of the ways to watch this is, as I'm burning off fuel, my thrust to weight ratio is getting better. And so once I get to uh, above two, I can pretty safely understand, or pretty safely count on the vessel making orbit, even just on two engines. So I can shut down that other pair and make orbit on just the center set. And that's actually four engines. Um, the nozzle, each linear aerospike has uh, two sets of nozzles. So, and you can see I'm kind of uh, burning in that X pattern. Just something to keep in mind if you use the linear aerospike and you set up action groups to shut off the engines. Um, you have to shut off both rows of burners because you can't fly it on a single row. And you'll notice the mech jab tab on 
on board. I threw that on to simulate um, kind of advanced avionics, but it's practically useless. Um, this is it trying to circularize, and it was just kind of all over the place. Um, probably me going from two to six engines didn't help it any. But it was just pretty much hopeless. Um, I'm probably going to cut it off because it's not even useful for um, orbital maneuvers. And I think that might be because it's thrusting slightly off axis, but I really don't have the patience or the interest in figuring it out. It's a little bit like the space shuttle I built. Um, it needs a little intuition to uh, manage your maneuver nodes. And because I thought I'd skip the video where I flew it up dry and then had to do another one to convince everybody it can carry a payload, um, I slapped together a little comm satellite and shoved it in the um, cargo bay. And <clears throat> with version 5.0 of B9 Aerospace, you now have toggleable action group buttons. And it <clears throat> I had previously flown this in one configuration and... Um, reset all my action groups right before launching this one, so it took me a minute to figure out what I was trying to do here. But I've mounted cameras in the cargo bay. Finally I figure out which action group will open it up. And this double door cargo bay is pretty slow to actuate, but it looks pretty awesome and it just fit the concept pretty well. I actually think the uh, Cargo bay I use on my space shuttle is better for the two and a half meter um, payloads. I could try repositioning that uh, docking port connector though. But I do have a uh, inline clampatron so it can dock with a station. That's removable if it needs to be. And this is the moment where I realized I'd messed up on my payload because I just kind of slapped the first thing together that came to mind. It was clipping into my landing gear wheel bays, as you'll notice. And because the payload really wasn't the point of this flight, um, I resorted to kind of a cheaty method just to get rid of it, which is the good old-fashioned time warp. It's dishonest and it's wrong, but I just needed to complete the flight. So <clears throat> with the payload out of the bay, it's uh, I just did launch, payload delivery, and instant return. This thing didn't even make one orbit, but I've got plenty of life support on it. Um, it's practically a space station that, launch it, that launches itself into orbit with all the uh, life support on board. So see me kind of chasing that maneuver node around. Um, did not rely on Mech Jeb to do it, but this is kind of my first uh, space flight with this configuration. I had been flying it without the uh, canards, but past a certain angle of attack, um, the tail just sinks like a rock, so I threw those on there to give a little control. Obviously, I had to mess with my uh, aerodynamics. Change the... And that's Those are procedural wings on it. They look like just B9 wings, um, but I needed to kind of have a little more control over the shape of my airfoil. So I went with procedural wings. And the reason why I went into so much trouble in the aerodynamics on this thing is because it's got some funky um, characteristics. It's half lifting body and half winged vehicle. And at a certain at certain angle of it, angles of attack, as it presents more of that fat, wide, flat underbody to the uh, airstream, the aerodynamics of the body actually start to um, fight and overtake those of the wings. And so when, it's when it was flying aerodynamically just straight into the wind, it was actually trying to auger down. But once you got past a certain angle of attack, there was enough surface area on the underside that it would act like the uh, center of lift would dynamically shift ahead of the center of mass and it would sink and flip and be completely unrecoverable. A lot of development went into this. Um, just dumping liquid fuel and oxidizer and then balancing my um, monopropellant. A lot of development went into this to get it to be that simple, um, but it wasn't as much of a headache as designing my first shuttle. 
designing my first shuttle way back in version 0.18 when I was hacking game files myself and using a uh, plugin written by a forum user named Endless Waves. I that was probably like a good two to three weeks of development to get a usable, flyable shuttle. This one I spent about three days on, and funnily enough, um, I went to the Ferrum Aerospace forums to uh, see if anyone had any pointers. Came back after class, um, started messing with the ship, and ended up getting it beat. So, just funny how stuff like that works out sometimes. It's got a little different um, flight return profile than the shuttle does because it's got a much lower, um, it's got a lot less drag. It's flat, it's aerodynamic, and so I end up having to do a lot of braking high up. Um, the shuttle, I usually pull that uh, flight path marker just a little bit off the west coast of uh, Kerbin's continent. For this one, after multiple trial and errors, um, I found it was much more, it wouldn't work unless I pulled that flight path marker pretty much to the middle of the ocean. And it still comes in pretty fast. I think I can get away with a little bit more braking. But you see pulling that back. It's actually a pretty fun uh, vessel to fly. I'm just kind of time lapsing through this because that's a lot of just a lot of time spent with the nose at 40 degrees just hanging out and once the uh, Apple apps marker starts catching up which means I'm my trajectory is flattening out I can drop the nose a little and I pretty much just held that attitude across the ocean until we went feet dry over the uh, Kerbal Space Center's continent and just kind of rode this attitude for a little while. It's got, it flies at a pretty high angle of attack, but it's glider return. It, I kind of like having all that extra drag, and in fact, um, have B9 aer aerospace uh, air brakes on there, which, uh, let's see, that's, I can't read that number in light works, but I'm assuming that's about 800, 600 to 800 meters a second. That's pretty pretty darn fast. There's not many speed brakes in the world that can hold up to that type of stress. So that's another uh, gameplay concession I've made. So I have better control over my speed. And I just kind of leave those uh, speed brakes engaged pretty much from the point I hit the west coast of Kerbin um, until just before landing. And this is still a pretty hairy approach because I've got to dive deep and then pull nose up to get that vertical speed down just riding those air brakes all the way in and you can see that venture star my previous landing is still on the runway yeah this is about to get really ugly really fast if you think you're puckering watching this um, I was uh, pretty tense I thought about trying to fly over it but I was 100% certain that was going to result in a uh, overshoot and flying into the ocean so I was trying to aim for the left lane of the runway and just try and shoot past and scare the crap out of those guys and I almost pulled it off except yeah started rotating and power slide ugly crash but nobody died nice little explosion as a punctuation there But this is from previous test flights. It can be safely landed. I'm probably going to try to make that uh, landing gear track a little wider. Um, if the previous Venture Star hadn't pitched over so hard, it probably wouldn't have been an issue. You'll notice the sound effects they've added to the uh, landing gear. Which, that's got to be the worst anti-skid system ever installed on aircraft landing gear. And just as a little bonus, um, using some of the more advanced instruments on the new B9 release, I decided to do an IVA landing. Um, this is actually the ship I left on the runway and ended up crashing into. This was not a full flight. Um, I just launched it um, with just enough fuel to get me out and turn around. Just 
just so I could practice making my approaches. I did my trick where I create a uh, save file on my re return so I can just keep reloading it and practicing my landings. Because it's, uh, it's a pretty different beast from the uh, space shuttle, so it's going to take a little more learning on my part to get fully conquered. And I think that's um, Enhanced Navball fighting with the B-9 uh, flight display. Because my flight path marker is off by about... Be between 3 and 5 degrees. We'll split the difference say it's off by 4. So it doesn't make... Uh, makes landing a little harder versus uh, some of the military simulators I'm used to. Um, you can usually just put your flight path marker on... a fighter jet at the end of the runway and you'll hit it. Came really close to uh, clipping that runway with the landing gear. But I really like the new instruments in, uh, five, in B9 5.0. Um, this is probably the first IVA landing I've pulled off in a very long time. Because there's not a whole lot of forward visibility out of this cockpit but this kind of makes up for it. I'm wondering if there's some integration with um, flight assist instruments for like an approach and glide path indicator. I'm gonna have to look into that. But yes, um, look forward to seeing this in future episodes of my KSP NASA series. I'm gonna do a couple more uh, test flights in Sandbox to make sure I've got it down. Because if I crash it in the, in the uh, series, it stays crashed and my Kerbal stay dead.